you've been shut down by big media, maybe unfairly, uh, we will be continuing to focus on this issue. And uh, Democrat failures across the country as we go into the midterm election cycle. Kathy, Tennessee, I was talking earlier about my home state of Connecticut, what's happened to this once vibrant manufacturing hub. Kathy. Hi, Laura. I'm, I'm born and raised from Connecticut. I heard everything you said about Connecticut, and I agree with you a thousand percent. Um, before Trump took office, Governor Malloy took in Syrian illegal Muslim immigrants. Connecticut polled; they were asked if they wanted them in or not. Thirty-two thousand said no. Four thousand said yes. Right. Took them in anyway. Yeah, they they don't and care our, what the our, people our, want. I mean, again, this is what Republicans have to say across the country. We actually are listening to what you want. You want safety, security for the homeland, for your state, for your family. And you want prosperity. You want the chance for rising wages. Uh, we want Americans the foca- to be the focus of our, of our electoral politics. We're going to give you that. That's what Trump is doing. Set aside all the side issues and the, and the media histrionics. How is this economy working for you? If you like it, then guess what? You got to vote for Republicans in the midterms. Are you going to lose all that you've gained? We have not had a party that has been investing in its own future. And they were really kind of connected most to an electorate when they were fighting for these seats when they got these seats, when they were campaigning most, when we had more of an American middle class. You know, their heyday was in the 90s when, like, you know, kids had, like, Furbies and, like, like parents like, had, like, soccer moms with, like, two vans and stuff. Like Furbies like, and two vans. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, <laughs> that's a dream. That's not America anymore. <laughs> I think she said, like, five times in two sentences. God bless her. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Uh, she kind of struck out, didn't she? All endorsed candidates lost their Tuesday primaries. So the Democrat Party is not fully socialist yet. Uh, she had a whirlwind tour of the United States, stumping for Abdul El Sayed for governor of Michigan, Fairu Saad in Michigan's 11th congressional district, Cory Bush in Murray, Missouri's first, and she's back in cr- congressional candidate Kaniela Ng in Hawaii. Uh, El Sayed lost his bid for governor by 20 points, according to numbers published by the New York Times. Sayed came in fourth in a five-way race, capturing only 18% of the vote. Cory Bush also lost by 20 points. Hi- uh, Hawaii's primary election will be August 11th. That Hawaii candidate should run, not walk, from Mar- Alexandria Casia cortezs she, she has to come out today and say, thanks, but no thanks. We're just fine here in Hawaii without you. But what is the future of the Democrat Party? Uh, Cortez says, uh, her, her likes notwithstanding, uh, said that that old era of 1990s soccer moms, that's over. That's gone. I keep thinking, OK, well, his impeachment notwithstanding, a two-term president, We had a budget that was balanced and even a budget surplus during Clinton. But those days are gone. Man, if you're a Democrat, I would say you need that type of coalition working together again. Republicans and Democrats, after Gingrich came in, we reformed welfare. Uh, The economy was doing really well. I mean, gosh, that's an interesting formulation. Not sure I understand it. But we thought we'd talk about this issue of the future of the party and Democrat Party, where it's going. Uh, Believe it or not, we have a lot of Democrats listening to the show, and it is a fascinating topic given the rise of some of these more socialist sentiments. Uh, Joining us now is Brian Dean Wright. He's a former CIA ops officer, opinion writer, Democrat advocate for rural and blue-collar workers, and David Sessions. He's a writer for The New Republic and used to write for Daily Beast Slate. He's active in the Boston branch of the Democratic Socialists of America. David, um, it's great to have you on. Uh, Welcome to the show uh, how do you see this Ocasio-Cortez's endorsements? Is that 
Is that surprising that none of them really worked out? Is this just the beginning of the socialist kind of takeover of the Democrat Party, or where are we? Hi, Laura. Well, uh, thanks for having me. Um, no, I don't. I'm not really surprised. Um, uh, Alexander's endorsement is not going to uh, not going to change the conditions in certain uh, districts overnight. Um, and and yeah, it's, I think you're I think you're right that it's uh, it's only the beginning. I, I'm not. I wouldn't even say that. Uh, that her victory itself, as as big of a deal as it is, um, necessarily means that there's going to be a socialist wave in the Democratic Party. Um, it's it could happen, but uh, I don't think we're there yet. Do you? I mean, as a separate matter, and I know people say this about Trump. They say, "Oh, is Trump really that smart?" I mean, I think it's pretty hard to be elected president of the United States if you're a dumb person. I mean, Obama is really smart. Bush is smart in his own way. I mean, everybody everybody has their way of communicating and connecting with people. But do you think Alexandra uh, Ocasio-Cortez is, is sharp? Is she smart? Uh, absolutely. She's a little, she's a little green. Um, like, like we would like our candidates. Uh, we don't want them all to be uh, coached by the democratic apparatus. Mm-hmm. Um, she's, she's young and she's, uh, she's learning on the job. Like a lot of, a lot of candidates right. who are running for office in the middle of this. Um, uh, so yeah. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, I think she is young. She's very attractive. She's, I mean, she's having a good time out there and she is. Right. But she's, know. she's incredibly, she's incredibly smart. She's incredibly strategic. She has made all of the right decisions in terms of uh, who, who she allies with and her, her messaging so far. Um, so, mm-hmm. yes, I think she's, I think we're, you know, we're only, we're only seeing the, the beginning of, of what will be a long career. Yeah, I think a lot of these millennial types or whatever generation she is at age 28, I don't even know what generation that is anymore. But they all have to stop saying like so much. It's, I'm sorry, but I say this to my kids. I mean, no offense, but it makes you sound unintelligent. Even You could be the most intelligent person. I have 50-year-old friends who say like all the time. It's they dis- do. Um, it's disturbing. They do. Even- even old people will do it. Even now. old people, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of putting it at age fifty old. All right, let's go to Brian. Brian, uh, you heard what David said. I mean, this is a good trend. It's mixing it up. The party needs new blood, uh, and it might not happen overnight. But this push for Medicare for all, uh, uh, subsidized or maybe even free college, uh, universal pre-K, all these things the Democrats have wanted. Uh, become some of these policies become more and more popular as you see some of the polling uh, of Democrats across the United States. It's a fraud. Everything you just heard your or the other guests say is an absolute fraud because we have to step back and understand what Democratic Socialists of America is all about. What was what this socialist movement about? It is not fundamentally what Democrats want. It is about taking wealth and controlling it uh, through and uh, for the government, right? Where, where the government owns all businesses and worker committees own and run all businesses, and we abolish profit. That is, if you go to DSA's website, if you talk to, to any DSA, uh, DSA uh, individual, such as uh, the other gentleman on the phone, he will tell you that that is their goal. And that is not the Democratic Party's goal. We may have differences with Republicans around taxation policies. Uh, that's fair. But we don't want to up in capitalism. We don't want to throw capitalism so that everything becomes equivalent of a, of a DMV whenever you go into a store. That's not what Democrats want. Yes, we can talk about things like Medicare X, which is something that, that uh, has been proposed in, in the Senate, that you could buy into uh, a Medicare policy. But that's not offering up, as a Dem- the socialists want, a $32 trillion plan that we can't afford. So this is the stuff that gets me so frustrated as a Democrat, is to see these folks try to take over a party uh, that doesn't reflect ultimately what we want. They are trying to use us as Democrats, as a party, as basically a parasitic host, right? Push free stuff for all, drive up the desire for the socialist belief, and then peel off and create their own socialist party. If you go uh, and, and listen to uh, Joseph Schwartz, who's vice chair of DSA, he's a, a member on their National Political Committee, he has written very explicitly that that is the goal, to take over not the Democratic Party, but to just use it as a parasitic host to create their own socialist party. Uh, would you like to respond, David? There's a lot uh, stated there. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a, I, I 
would deg- not disagree very much with uh, with what <laughs> what Brian said there. Um, I think you're, he's absolutely right that as as socialists, we um, we don't necessarily care about the Democratic Party. We it's a liberal capitalist party. It will never be socialist, and at best, it will be a temporary vehicle for changing the national conversation, for creating support for um, within our restrictive uh, two-party system within for for mm-hmm. policies that that take us closer to show well, where do you where is however, socialism however, could you um, i just want to ask and this is a this is a really serious question i'm not trying to be cute here uh david where is socialism working and where has it worked well well let, let me say in terms of um to to answer that question let me say that all of the policies that that brian went through that and as you as you said correctly a uh, large parts of the american public support including well, a democratic party support yeah. including republicans majorities of, of republican support raising the minimum wage a majorities of the republicans support uh, free college and an overwhelming majority free of college i mean who's paying for the free college an overwhelming majority of americans support raising taxes on corporations of the wealthy yeah, but that's and that's are, that's kind of potato. Not, that's kind of peanuts those, for what the socialists want, right? I mean, you know what I'm saying. Where does pure socialism exist as a, an example of really unmitigated success? What what what, no, what country? Where is it working? Standard. Where is it? Where is there a, a socialism and a vibrant middle class? And a where where does it exist? There is no such thing as pure socialism. Every every social, you know, so-called socialist country has arisen in specific historical conditions spe- with a specific history and a specific ideology. The, the Soviet Union and China and Cuba all have very different ideologies and very tried to apply them to very different countries and very different stages of of development. And so. I right, but it was a disaster. Right. I mean, China. I mean, China is a complete disaster if you believe in freedom. There is no freedom in I, China. I agree. I completely right. agree. Right. So, um, it, and obviously the same thing with the Soviet Union. I live there. Uh, Cuba, uh, driving around in you know fifty year old cars, political prisoners still uh, behind bars. Uh, but if if everything's free, that means the ultimate goal. And Brian, you can chime in here. The ultimate goal here is a massive redistribution. Of wealth, unlike anything, of course, that we've really seen in this country, uh, and it's basically taking yep. from one group and just giving to another, rather than giving opportunity and economic growth to people so they can care for themselves and, and sustain themselves, which is brings you confidence and brings you a sense of personal responsibility. Uh, but Brian, look, as we bring in new immigrants into the United States and a lot of illegal immigrants, millions and millions. A lot of them are very hospitable to these ideas of of free college, free daycare, free, 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 free. It never, you know, the, the word free, you know, never seems to, uh, you know, nef- never seems to go away when it applies to services. Uh, so it's very popular in new, the new immigrant, uh, especially illegal immigrant uh, group. So what we know to be true in terms of immigrant populations is first generation folks. To, to, to put it in old vernacular, tend to be takers, but second and third generation folks are givers. In other words, they make more contributions than we take. But what, what, what is certainly true for folks, not only immigrants, illegal or, or, or otherwise, but also people who are struggling in this country, the, the democratic socialists, well, let's just call them socialists, know exactly what the sweet siren song is, and that is free. It's free health care. It's free housing. It's free college. You, you mentioned that the, the gentleman in Hawaii running, he is, his big platform is free housing. But at the end of the day, it can't be paid for. I mean, if, if you looked at the recent analysis of, of the, the Medicare uh, for All or the single payer program, even if you doubled everybody's taxes, uh, individual taxes, double it, you're still not going to be able to pay for just the single payer system. Forget about free housing and free college. Look, David mentioned, hey, uh, people like these things. Of course we like these things. We all like free stuff, but you have to pay for it. Somebody has to pay for it. And that is the problem with socialism. You mentioned uh, some fantastic examples, places like Cuba and Venezuela and, and Soviet Union and others. 
wherever you go, and in fact, DSA, this Joseph Schwartz, who's the vice chair of the DSA, has said, it is true that wherever we have gone, we, it hasn't worked. But what they are saying to America is, hey, give us a shot in the United States because we think we can get it right this time. And that is absolutely patently absurd to have the, the nations, or I'm sorry, the, the world's most important uh, country that, that sustains peace and prosperity around this world, that we're going to now be a grand experiment. And if it doesn't work and we end up like Venezuela, who's going to step in? I mean, what other nations are going to step up to the plate to ensure human liberty? China? <laughs> this is what is at stake. And this is what we have to remember because, folks, uh, like David and others who bless our hearts think that they're doing the right thing by trying to, to, to create a better America for everybody, that's a valiant goal, and that's lovely. But this experimentation should not be done on a national basis by throwing out everything that we have done to create an, an amazing, flawed, yes, but an amazing country. And I, I will be damned, if I may, to let a Democratic Party be used, as your guest just said, as a vehicle, as a parasitic host, to, to let them create All right. a new socialist utopia. Well, we're, we're going to track this story. I'm really happy both of you came on. David Sessions, Brian Dean Wright. This is an ongoing struggle, and it's, we'll see which side kind of wins out in the Democratic Party, and they're going to have to figure it out themselves. It's a big country. A lot of different local issues involved. States are very different. And this is going to play out not in some type of monolithic way, I don't think, across the country.